I think these old Land Rovers look a lot better when they're all filthy. Can't have a clean looking Land Rover. There's gotta be oil all over the floor of your garage. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a look at the RC four-wheel drive D90 Heritage Edition and we're doing some weathering and we're also adding a whole bunch of parts to make this truck a little more your own, a little more unique. That's sort of the goal of today. Of course, what you're looking at right here is the final uh, result of all that weathering and I'm gonna show you exactly how I got to this point. Multi-step process, of course. Anyway, it's not really all that complicated. It, does, it doesn't require much skill either. So uh, literally anybody can do this. It's super easy and super fun and super rewarding as you can see from the results. Uh, one thing I did want to mention right away before we get too far into this is that a lot of the parts that I have added to this truck are on RC Four Wheel Drive's website. You can buy them right now. They do say that they are for the Galande 2. They aren't exactly for the Galande 2 in this form. The Galande 2 has been around since, what, 2013, I think, seven years? So there are a lot of existing parts that you might think are gonna work just fine on a D90 because this is a D90. The problem is they've changed this body slightly and there are a lot of things that won't work as easily out of the box as I've made it look here. Uh, some things do require some trimming. Some things require a spacer here and there. Some things won't work at all with some of the other accessories. And it's all going to be a bit of a crapshoot until RC Four Wheel Drive can update their website. However, I have made most of these things work and I will tell you how I made them work. Why don't we start right at the front and we'll work our way back. So right up front we have this nice CC hand uh, bumper. It is made for the Galande 2 and it is made for a D90. If you want to get a winch to fit on the front of this truck, because this new grill is a little bit wider than the old grill on the old D90, uh, you will have to add some spacers. I put some five mil spacers between the bumper and the bumper mount, and everything fits just fine. You can see that it, it sits quite nicely in terms of its height on this truck, it looks totally appropriate. And with that smaller 9.5 CTI uh, worn winch on there, Everything looks awesome. I think this really looks nice with the skid plate along the bottom here. Got these great light mounts. These lights can be included depending on which bumper you end up getting. Really nice piece. Uh, I think it looks fantastic on here. Even with the spacers, it does push it out a little bit further than I would like, but I can totally get away with it. And you really kind of see it in profile, just like that there, how far out it sticks. Not so bad for a trail truck. I think it looks pretty cool. Moving further up on the truck, these are air filters and they go on the wings here uh, or fenders i guess they call them wings in britain uh, but these also don't necessarily fit properly these are cc hand as well they're molded plastic they're designed to actually be screwed in from underneath on the older d90 body because the, actually the air filter was like screwed into place i did actually uh, end up cutting off that screw in mount on these air filters and just ca would them into place. Uh, it would have been nice if they fit properly, but I think in this case, they're gonna be just fine. Next thing I wanted to talk about was this windscreen roll bar. Uh, it does look like it fits pretty well, uh, but uh, because this hood is designed to open, uh, you won't be able to open it all the way anymore because of this cross member, and it really should be pushed further back on the truck and you know more flush with the actual windscreen. Again, profile kind of gives it away. Not exactly accurate, doesn't fit very well, but it fits well enough when kind of seen from a distance. Uh, you get up close, you realize you can't really open the hood anymore, and it sort of, sort of falls apart a little bit. Moving to the rear of the truck, this is the stock rear bumper. I have added this pintle, uh, which is a sort of, uh, you know, a towing element or tow hook. It really, on any normal truck, should be rotated 90 degrees, and this should be facing upwards. It shouldn't be horizontal, it should be vertical, uh, because that's how you, you know, plop the trailer onto there is with that. So having it sideways isn't gonna work at all. I don't know why they've changed the bolt pattern on here. Uh, it always used to be right before. I think that might have just been an oversight. Kind of a weird one, if I'm honest. Uh, and if it ain't broke, Certainly don't fix it improperly. <laughs> These uh, mud flaps work great with this rear bumper, but 
They won't work with this CC hand bumper that I also picked up, uh, which I thought was gonna look a lot cooler with the front bumper, but uh, I like the mud flap look more than I like the look of the bumper, so I ended up sticking with the stock bumper. It would have been cool if CC Hand had worked these mud flaps and that design into this bumper design, but I guess you can't have everything. Uh, next, uh, I did get the inner fenders for this truck. However, they are designed for the original D90, and because this is a more flat floor in this pickup truck style one, you can't fit the rear inner fenders properly without smashing down the body on the chassis. And that's what I've done, just because I wanted those fenders in. Uh, but this sort of another mildly annoying thing is that the rear ones don't fit. The front ones fit just fine. Uh, and finally, I did swap out the stock wheels and tires. Uh, if you noticed on my last video, I did have this BF Goodrich uh, Crawler TA on the truck with a different wheel. Those wheels and their offset were just tight enough that the inside diameter of the tire was actually rubbing on the steering links. And you can't have that you'd uh, run, rub right through the tire eventually. So uh, I swapped to these uh, RC four wheel drive. I think these are uh, the military or uh, I can't remember exactly which ones they are. These are the 1.9 Tango down wheels. They are not bead locks, they are glue on, but I thought they looked perfect on a Land Rover. Plus they're five lug, which is accurate to a Land Rover. And finally, for upgrades, things that I've done to this truck, I added front and rear ARB diff covers. Uh, these are for the Yoda 2. This truck comes with Yoda 2s, so they fit perfectly. I think they look awesome, and I especially like them once they've been weathered, because that red anodizing is a bit too aggressive for me. Okay, so that's all the changes I've made to the truck itself. Uh, then let's get into some of the weathering. And this was a really fun, easy to do process. Anybody can do it. You don't need any special tools, but they will help. I did all this with my Pash Talon airbrush um, and I used Vallejo paints and washes to get these effects. The first thing I did was I wanted to make sure I kept the windshield wiper uh, pattern. So like, even though it's a dusty and dirty truck and that's what the look I was going for, I wanted to make sure that the man or driver had used these wipers in that journey. So I did a little template. I traced out the pattern of the wipers and which way they go and how much uh, surface area they would cover. Traced it onto some masking tape and pulled it off the truck, cut away the excess and stuck those back on. That way, when I did my flat clear coat uh, and to give me a nice base, to put all of my other paint on in order to kind of dull everything down a little bit, it would leave the pattern of the wipers on the windscreen. That's exactly how you would get that look and it's super easy to do. You'll notice I also painted the fenders to be black, sort of a rubberized black actually. I think they look a lot better black. I think it takes a little bit of all of that green away and just kind of, you know, makes it look a little more realistic. Once all of that had dried, I uh, started using my airbrush and I used three different colors. I used cement, I used a dark earth, and I think I used like a red earth as well. Uh, and just in varying kind of amounts of, of spray, I just kind of go all over the body. I start at the front and kind of work my way back. I imagine that if I'm spraying from the front, I'm doing it in short, small bursts to replicate dust being kicked up from a truck or another vehicle in front of the Defender. That way it's actually hitting the truck in the right places. It's actually like dust is being kicked up and then just sprayed across the front of the truck. I also do the same thing along the fender lines as well. Any dust is gonna be kicked up from both rear tires. So as you're driving along, dust will naturally get kicked up along the sides. Same thing in the back, all along the rear fenders, all along the bumper, all along the mud flaps, all along that area. Same thing along the top, start from the front, and just kind of let the paint or the air that's flowing through that airbrush do all the hard work for you. That's sort of how it works. I go over the whole truck one color at a time and I try to vary the positioning of the color and where things are going. And that's basically it. There isn't much more to it than that. It's fairly simple. I also uh, did fill in all the panel gaps with a little bit of Vallejo wash. I used the dark khaki wash uh, and I think it just kind of adds a little bit of depth and texture to some of those panel lines. Also really helps sell the idea that this truck is truly filthy. 
Because I wasn't going for a super weathered, dirty look, there's no need to do a wash over the entire body. It's certainly something you can do and something I would recommend doing after you've done your clear or flat clear coat before you get into all your other weathering. Washes tend to look best when they are done first. Maybe you don't have an airbrush at home, you can still use aerosol paints. I just would do it outside, obviously, and do it from a distance of maybe two feet. And be very, very conservative in the amount of paint that you're letting spray out. Just short, quick bursts and you'll get the same basic effect. It might cover a little more area at one time than an airbrush would, but you will still get basically the same effect. I also make sure to get as much on the mud flaps as possible in the rear bumper because dust always gets kicked up like this and kind of would cake, sort of would gather all in one area. And once you've done all the coats, you're basically done. That's gonna be how I achieve this look. And it's subtle, but that's the idea. Weathering is a very subtle process. And if you overdo it, it tends to look like you overdid it. My best sort of advice is when you think you've done enough, you probably have. And that's a good point to stop. I just think this kind of makes this truck look a lot more original now and a lot more personal too. Because RC four wheel drive sells the same kit hundreds and hundreds of times over, there's always gonna be some way that you can make this thing your own. And one of the best ways I think is with weathering. The accessories are nice and they look cool, but making it your own by painting it or giving it some weathering, can't beat it. So all in all, not a very difficult process, something I'm sure you can tackle at home. And in fact, I'd love for you to post in the comments down below how many times you have tried weathering and if airbrushing or aerosol paints is the way you do it. So there you go. Uh, a nice little quick demo on some weathering that certainly you can do at home. Like I said, post all your comments down below. I'd love to hear your experiences. And if you've got any questions about this process, by all means, post them down below as well. I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, you want to see more content like this, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I think that's going to do it for today. My thanks to RC Four Wheel Drive for providing all of these parts, despite them not necessarily fitting quite right the first time. And I'd like to thank you for watching. See you again soon.